Well, well, just getting my workout in with my trusty Sigma 150 to 600 telephoto zoom. And this is the contemporary model I've owned for a few years now. It's served me pretty well. I've even won awards with it. So I wanted to chat about it today and really break it down, tell you what's awesome about it and where it falls short. So let's get going. So here it is, the big huge Sigma 150-600 to Contemporary DG HSM OS. If you were curious about what all that means, there you go. And here's just a few specs and features of this lens right before we dive into build quality. So the first thing you notice about this thing is that it's huge. It's 4 and 3 quarters at its widest with the sunshade and about 13 inches long. And that's not even fully extended. At full extension, it's 16 inches long with the sunshade. It's a beast. It's also pretty heavy, weighing just over four and a quarter pounds. Even without the sunshade, it's still an impressive 10 and a half inches long. But more often than not, I find myself using the sunshade. It also reverse mounts right onto the lens for easy storage and fits perfectly inside the soft case that Sigma includes. The zoom ring is big and grippy, but might take a few revolutions depending on your hand size to get full zoom. It also comes with a nice low profile tripod mount. Now unlike the big zoom ring, the manual focus ring is small and kind of in a weird place. It's definitely not my favorite design and doesn't really feel that precise either. I mostly tend to rely on autofocus for this lens. Although it does have an autofocus, manual focus and manual override switch. It also has a focus limiter switch, which is kind of handy depending on the distance of your subject. Of course, this lens is image stabilized with two settings, which we'll go over later. And finally, Sigma's included two custom modes, which allow you to really dig in and customize your lens for the way that you shoot. This is done through Sigma's own Optimization Pro software. It also does include a handy zoom lock switch which unfortunately is only usable when it's completely zoomed out. Typically this is used for transport. It does have massive 95mm filter threads, which means any filters that you plan to buy are going to be quite expensive. It's got a nice tight fitting metal mount and a beautiful little weather sealing gasket. Other than that it is a mainly plastic or composite construction with some metal in it, but it does feel good. And it definitely feels like it does have the quality that we've come to expect from Sigma. And one awesome feature that Sigma offers is their mount conversion service. So you can actually take this lens with you if you decide to change camera manufacturers. All in all, it's got an impressive build and features that I give four and a half stars. As far as value is concerned, it's pretty much easy to see. This thing's packed with features, and although it's a few years old now, it still keeps up with a lot of the newer lenses and technology. Of course, there's more and more competition coming out all the time, but around 900 American dollars brand new, this thing sure has a lot going for it. There's also a sport model that's about double the price and two pounds heavier. Now, one thing I do appreciate with Sigma is what they do include with their lenses. Like in this case, the soft carrying case, the sunshade, and the tripod collar. And as we touched on, this lens and a lot of other Sigma lenses have the ability to be completely customized. Unfortunately, to do that and to update the firmware on these lenses, you're going to need the Sigma USB dock, which does come at an additional cost. Another great thing to consider is the warranty on this lens. Sigma has a great warranty, typically better than Canon or Nikon, offering up to seven years like here in Canada. With all these factors in mind, I give this lens four and a half stars for value. So let's talk performance. And how does this thing stack up? Well, first let's look at the autofocus system. Now, like a lot of big telephotos, if you've got your subject locked in, this thing does pretty well. It can keep up with a lot of your fast action like birds or sports. But if you're going from near to far focusing a lot, it can get a bit frustrating as it does hunt a little bit. 
It's best to get really comfortable with that focus distance limiter switch and definitely take advantage of those custom modes depending on what you're shooting. If you're thinking about using this lens for video at all, consider that it is a 600mm and you're going to need an absolutely rock steady tripod. Here's an example at 600 of a hummingbird and you can see that even on a tripod there's still movement at those higher focal lengths. The video quality is decent and it's also pretty cool to have the reach for some of these shots. So next let's have a look at image stabilization and start by really pushing it to the limits at 600 millimeters handheld. Here is it on and now off. Here it is again on. And once again, off. And just for difference, here's handheld at 150 millimeters with IS on and off. Image stabilization is amazing to have, but don't expect wonders at 600 millimeters. Now this is a lens that can be used on a full frame or an APS-C crop sensor camera. And although full frame is going to give you a little bit more detail in your pictures, it's commonly used a lot on crop sensor cameras just for that extra reach. So here's the difference between a full frame sensor and a crop sensor camera, both using this lens to see the difference in quality and of course the reach you can get. Usually these big telephoto lenses are made for sports or nature. And like everything in photography, all lenses, cameras and systems have give and take. You typically want to get as close to your subject as you can. And having that crop sensor does definitely help, but it comes at a sacrifice. And often that's image quality, low light performance and bokeh. I've used this lens with both crop and full frame cameras with great results in both, although the edge does go a little bit to the full frame, as it's definitely designed to take advantage of it. So now let's talk sharpness. How does it perform optically? No, it's not the best, sharpest lens out there, but it does perform incredibly well for the money. Personally, I found that around 300 to 500 millimeters is going to be your sharpest, at about f8 but honestly most of my pictures are taken completely zoomed in at 600 and it's rare that I'm disappointed now a quick note on adapters as you probably know I used to be a Canon shooter and when I moved to Sony I had a lot of lenses and I needed an adapter I bought the MC 11 and although it does work with this lens like most lenses you are gonna lose some functionality and performance Native is always of course the best choice, but with Sony's lack of big telephoto zooms or the incredibly expensive price on the ones that they do have, this was a good option for me. All in all, this thing performs very well and I'm not going to be comparing it to big huge telephoto primes or things way outside of its price range. So in this regard, it gets 4 stars for performance. So if you're a subscriber to the channel, you know that I'm not an overly technical guy, I'm not a pixel peeper, and I don't care about things that can be fixed easily in post. I care about how my gear performs in the real world. And every picture you're about to see has been taken with this lens on either a crop sensor or a full frame camera. So you be the judge. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But for the price? Well, I'll let you decide.
So as usual, here's my personal pros and cons for this lens. And there's not a heck of a lot of bad things to say about it. Overall, this is one of the lenses that I've owned for the longest. And if I could go back, would I buy it again? Absolutely. I give this lens four solid stars. I also like to rate things on a scale from never think about again to consider to definitely buy. If you're looking for this lens on a Nikon or Canon mount, I'd say absolutely go for it. And if you're using Sony and you're considering this lens with an adapter, if you don't already own the adapter or the lens, I'd say maybe wait as we're due for one of these in an E-mount. That's it, that's all for this one guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it and if you did get something out of it, hit that like and subscribe button and drop your questions and comments down below. Love to hear from you. And if you're thinking about picking up this lens, I will drop some links in the description as well. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See ya.